Don't be scared. This is the podcast that always leaves the light on. This is Monster Under the Bed, the podcast that takes some of the fears and myths in our society and busts them wide open. My name is Alar Tankler. Once I was just playing a game uh, called Fortnite with my cousin and then suddenly it just said uh, you couldn't play anymore, like a screen popped on. Huh? And so I couldn't play anymore. I was trying to go back into the game, but I couldn't. How did you feel about that? Uh, at first I thought it was a glitch, but then my dad told me it was um, a hacker. and. Uh, I was kind of stressed because I was scared he would uh, steal uh, and do a lot of stuff to my 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 account. Chris, who's who's that kid? That was my kid, actually, Thomas. You know, he's 10 years old, so he likes playing games online, and his account was hacked about a year ago. He's still worried about it today. But what did the hackers do? Well, fortunately, they didn't do much. They changed his username. They changed his logo to some scary image. But we did get the account back and we added a better password. Are you worried about your kids using computers? I do want them to explore the internet and I want them to open their minds. But yes, I do worry that they'll click something that lets a hacker clean out my bank account. Because I have to admit, I don't think about cybercrime all that often, either at home or in the office. There's this myth that if we have the latest software on our computers and we have a strong IT department at work, then we're safe from cyber attacks. So the myth is we all think we're safe, but we're not? Well, do you remember in the first episode of this series, Alar, you talked about leaving a light on because of the monster under the bed? Yeah, of course, the monster under the bed that that doesn't exist. Well, in this case, there is a monster under the bed, but few of us bother to leave a light on. And that monster is cybercrime. And this myth that we're safe is causing us to lose money, right? Are Are you gonna tell us how to turn on the light? Yes, I will. You definitely should not simply rely on software updates or the IT department to protect you. So today on Monster Under the Bed? Keep safe from cybercrime. Think like a hacker. Monster Under the Bed is a podcast from the European Investment Bank, the EU Bank. And what we'll do here is we'll explore different fears and beliefs people have which are costing us as a society. So in each episode of the podcast, we'll fight one imaginary, or in this case, an underrated monster, and hopefully win the battle for a more rational way of doing things in the spheres of education, healthcare, climate, and many others. Hey, I'm Chris, and I work with Alar at the European Investment Bank. So that you don't miss an episode, subscribe to Monster Under the Bed on iTunes, Acast, Stitcher, Player FM, or wherever you get your podcasts. And let us know if you can think of a monster we should expose on future episodes. You can get in touch with me on Twitter. I'm at Allar Tankler, A-L-L-A-R-T-A-N-K-L-E-R. Or you can just tag at EIB. So Chris, you, you said we should think like a hacker. What does that mean? Ah, good question. I talked to several cybersecurity experts. They told me we need to think more about how we might be hurt by cybercrime and what we can do to prevent attacks. I mean, I think the point about the IT department is, is important because I think in, in, in a way that's a kind of crutch that people use. That they think, well, this is something they can just rely on others to keep them safe. Uh, the sad reality is, is that you can't. Obviously, having a good IT department is very useful, but there's a huge amount of this that really comes down to individual users. That was Jonathan Lusthaus. He's a sociologist at the University of Oxford and an expert on cybercrime. He spent seven years talking to cybercriminals for a recent book. So if we think about many attacks um, that are happening, there's often a human element to it. So we might think of these things as being very technical, whether it's involving malware or or something else. But often for that malware to be engaged, for it to actually uh, play the function that it's designed to do, um, this requires someone to click on a link or an attachment or to visit a a suspicious website or whatever it might be. And so what that means is that even in these very technical types of attacks, 
we're often seeing that human element, which means each person has a responsibility uh, in terms of keeping themselves safe, but also keeping their organization safe. I wonder how the IT departments feel when someone calls them a crutch. I wondered about that too. I asked IT experts at the European Investment Bank, and they actually agreed with Jonathan, believe it or not. They said there is only so much they can do. So here are Vicky, Politopolo, and Jacoba Cedars explaining why they can't protect us all the time. An IT department is, uh, is just a security control. So all security controls can fail at some uh, a point. But we should change our attitude. Uh, we should be uh, aware of the, of the risks that uh, we, we have. Uh, so we cannot just uh, relax that a good IT department can protect us. Um, For instance, uh, there are so-called zero-day attacks. That's a new attack that our IT department doesn't know about. And a big attack vector, a way to attack would be sending emails, phishing, make you click a link, click an attachment, and there could be nasty stuff in that. And things start executing on the network. And if that's a new type of attack, no one knows how to work with it. And they, that could steal money or encrypt the whole and entire content and could really ruin a lot of business. And that's, that's all the time happening. Yeah. Every day, new zero-day attacks are coming. A good IT department can make uh, things harder for an attacker. Uh, so uh, it's... We, we can uh, always, the attackers, they are uh, one step ahead. And uh, we are just trying uh, to, to, to catch them. So it's a, a rather a game, a cat and, a cat and a mouse Constant game. Constant rat race. Uh, yeah. uh, exactly. So we need a new way of thinking. But how important is it that we address this problem? What if we just do nothing? Uh, you're not going to like this answer, Alar. Hacking will keep getting worse, and part of the reason is the profit. One recent study suggested that cyber criminals are generating more than a trillion a year in revenue, and this isn't going to slow down, because cyber criminals are getting more sophisticated, they're working more often in groups, cyber attacks are causing big losses to the global economy, and not all of these attacks are reported because some companies are embarrassed or they're just scared to reveal them. And I see here that the European Commission says that there are several thousand cybercrime attacks every day in Europe and that most European companies have experienced a cybersecurity incident. Yes, that's true, and it's worse. The cost of cybercrime has doubled in the past few years. The World Economic Forum, for example, has named cybercrime one of the planet's most critical issues. The European Investment Bank, the EU Bank, has made investing in cybersecurity a priority, partly because preventing hacking helps keep companies' balance sheets healthy and it's good for the economy. I asked Anders Bolin, a digital specialist at the bank, if it's enough simply to update our computers and hope the IT department can do the rest. One could make a comparison. Do you trust the red light in a crossing? <laughs> I think one has to be aware that it's down to the individual's uh, behavior. The IT department is a very important uh, toolbox uh, for a company to, to make sure that you have the uh, sort of the technical tools in place to uh, avoid. But if uh, one individual in an organization is not following the procedures, uh, you're opening up a back door into the company. So what can the European Investment Bank do about this? After all, we're not a software firm. You're right, we're not a software company. The people at the bank working in technology investment tell me that companies are surprised when they hear that we can do a lot to help them fight cybercrime. There are several areas where the bank can get involved, actually. We invest in companies developing advanced software that protects people's data. We're helping companies hire more computer experts. And we remind companies that when they're making investments in new technology, they should invest in cybersecurity to keep this technology safe. This sounds like a really huge a global problem, but Just who are these hackers exactly? Well, the hackers could be your neighbor or a colleague. The hacker could be a mile away. The hacker could be a continent away. Here's Jonathan Lusthaus again, describing the average cyber criminal. I think overall the kind of uh, young hacker stereotype uh, is, is a little outdated now. So we, we're still seeing people like this involved. 
we're still seeing these sort of younger offenders maybe messing around, maybe not fully understanding what they're involved in. Uh, but we've reached a point now where really we're looking at something that's highly professional and highly organized. And so when they're starting to get into that part of this world, um, it really starts to become much more like a, a business, much more like a job for them. And there are certainly offenders, former offenders that I spoke to who this was their job. Um, this was, you know, earning them a substantial amount of money. This is what they did. Uh, while I also spoke to others who, while it might not have been their only job, it was a core job. So it was sort of a second job or it was a, you know, they were running multiple businesses. Some of them might have been legitimate and some of them less than legitimate. But in, in a lot of these cases, you know, there was a, a large amount of money being made and that was kind of a key driver um, in terms of why they're involved. The, the final point I guess you made, which is around, could it be a neighbor or a coworker? Uh, it, it can always be. You never really know who's who when you're talking about these sorts of things happening online. But the point about that really is one of the threats that people sometimes ignore is they're always looking for this kind of external threat, uh, someone outside of an organization. But one of the things we see is insiders um, are also quite a big threat. And so when we talk about could it be my coworker, that's exactly the type of threat we're talking about is someone within an organization uh, who might be you know, turning against that organization for a long, number of reasons. And those people can be extremely damaging if they make that choice. So hackers are everywhere, and that is scary. So maybe now it's time to give listeners some advice on how to stay safe. Are there do's and don'ts we can list? Ah, that's a great idea. Actually, the bank's experts have a lot of advice. But here's a simple tip from my son, Thomas. If you see an image of, like, you can win a teddy bear, uh, ask your parents first. Huh, that's a good one. But any other advice? Okay, now we'll turn to three experts at the bank. Vicky, Jacoba, and Federico Perilin. They told me their favorite tips for adults and children. First of all, we all should use strong passwords. Uh, and we should not use the same passwords for everything. So please don't give the, the password that you have for your bank account, for your uh, website, for your uh, online banking a website with the uh, uh, so uh, with the, f the password that you have for the Facebook for yeah. Facebook. Um, we did research in the Netherlands across all the banking people, four banks together, four thousand people, and we found the privacy paradox and the password paradox. Most people know they should use a difficult password. They should refresh it. They should not use it in various environment the same password, but still they do. Even I do. I'm a security person. That's what we call the privacy paradox. People are worried for their data and for their security. And at the same time, they're at ease. So security and ease of use are always the three that are uh, fighting each other. So always choose for security, not for ease. Yeah. That's the message. And another important part is also that you have to keep uh, your software up to date, not only here at the bank, because the, your IT department is taking care of that, but also at home with your personal laptop, you should always uh, take, uh, maintain your software up to date, also get an antivirus, uh, because for example, uh, we had an example of uh, attack, a ransomware attack. Uh, it's just uh, you receive an email and you click uh, on a specific link and uh, the computer starts to be encrypted completely. So you lose access to all your data. So imagine that you cannot access your document anymore, your image anymore. You click on it and you get just a, a window saying that you have to pay to get your data back. And uh, we are not just talking about uh, our personal life, so your personal laptop, because we had in Baltimore in the US, uh, uh, all the computer of the city were uh, yeah. attacked by a ransomware and they were with Windows XP. So we are talking about an old a legacy yeah. software that is not supported anymore. They didn't upgrade the, yeah. all the computers and they were attacked with the ransomware. Yeah, and like, that was yeah. really a big problem. And uh, we should not download from untrusted uh, sources as well. Uh, because we have seen many incidents that uh, someone downloaded an update of a software from uh, a source uh, that uh, 
uh, had the malware uh, on it. So uh, update the software, but update the software from trusted sources as well. This is something very important. Yeah, and I think the biggest and easiest, never click that link, never no. open that untrusted sender's email, be very much aware of that. And ransomware, huh, then you have to pay a ransom to get your data free. If you make your backup, you don't need to pay because you have your backup. So I make backups of my private data every week. So for that part, I'm safe, even if I click uh, some link. And oh, yeah. uh, something else, uh, we should not reveal uh, too uh, much uh, information on social media uh, 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 and the children as well. Uh, so we have to teach our children that they should not reveal uh, information if they are on holidays, for example, because uh, a, a, th a thief may read this uh, post on the Facebook and uh, they could um, uh, come and uh, be at our home to, to, to steal uh, uh, valuable uh, things for us. So um, publish as less as uh, you can. This is our advice. And Jonathan Lusthaus told me that the simplest solutions help the most, but many people don't even do the minimum. There are obviously some simple ideas um, that really most people should be doing. So you've mentioned a couple. I mean, having strong and diverse passwords, um, you know, having basic software in place, whether it's antivirus or things like this, um, having a, a firewall activated on your computer. These sorts of things are actually quite simple to do, uh, but not everyone does do them. But that brings us to a broader point, which is even though, some of the, even though some of these things could probably be quite easily done by a lot of people, they're still not being done. And, and this is even after people are being sort of encouraged to do them. And so I think in some sense, this situation is more complicated for the average user, uh, even than those in the tech sector would like to think. And for me, really, if we're going to have one message, it should be a message of being cautious. Um, if that's one thing people can take out of this kind of cybersecurity discussion, it's to be aware um, of the dangers out there, to be aware that there is this kind of shadow industry that is uh, really spending time trying to figure out how, how to defraud people and how to attack them in various ways. The experts had other tips too, Alar. People in companies, they need to report cybercrime more often. And countries need to cooperate more across borders to track down cybercriminals. And then the banks, they need to share data more about the origins and the amounts of attacks. Here are Jacoba and Federico once more, talking about the importance of working together and reporting crimes. I'm from Holland and there the banks are connecting and sharing the bad guys' data with each other. And I think if that happens across every domain, not just the tech companies, the banks, but also the governments and the police, I think that would be the only way to stop it. But we need everyone to help us and I would say to the general, to everyone, yeah, think like a hacker, never click links, never open okay. the attachments. If everyone did that, I think we could contain a lot of damage. I like that. Think like a hacker. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you see something, please report. report. You have to report if you there is a data breach. If you see something that is strange, it could be strange, you have to report. This is the only way to, to fight the cybercrime. Well, Chris, you have almost scared me off using a computer. So what next? What about the future? Well, I should tell you, the near future doesn't look good. We do hope to slow down cybercrime, but the hackers will get even more sophisticated and crafty. Yeah, the hackers are smarter every day, so... They work like a corporate, yeah. eh? So what, so what will happen in the future? Are we going to end cybercrime one day, or will it, will it just keep, getting, keep growing? I, I think it will keep growing. It will be an endless red race. But doesn't, isn't that scary for your jobs? I mean, your jobs are going to get harder and harder, right? They are. But we like challenges. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, the, uh, the bad guys, the hackers, they're always ahead. So uh, we can, with the sort of firewalls and everything, a company can catch the majority of the hackers. But the ones uh, in the lead will always be in the lead. Well, thanks for giving us the most worrying podcast so far. No, Alar, cheer up. My kids have a simple suggestion and I love it. Will it make me feel worse or better? Well, see what you think. If you could talk to a hacker now that you know what a hacker can do, what would you say to the hacker? I would uh, say... Stop doing it. 
Yeah, stop doing it because it's rude. Be a normal person, not a hacker. Yeah. Imagine like, if play with somebody else and not hack somebody. Else.